So when you're walking along the shore at the beach, you might see things that look like plants and you're not quite sure what they are. So sea grasses versus seaweed is something that I find myself helping my friends and family identify through photos. And so sea grasses are like the plants on your lawn. They actually have roots and leaves like that. And seaweeds, which you find on the shore that smelly sometimes, um, don't have true roots and, and leaves. So they get their nutrients from the whole water column. The sea grass is a really important habitat for fish. So it's a nursery ground for the baby fish. It's a habitat where they can grow and thrive. It stabilizes the shoreline. It brings in a lot of money economically for fisheries, for tourism. And overall, it's just a really beneficial kind of habitat in Barnegat Bay. And so what I'll be showing you today during our Facebook Live Lab session is those differences. So I'll be having that seagrass and seaweed out on the boat, and we're gonna be looking at those and helping you to determine who is who and what is what. And then talking a bit about my research. So looking at the monitoring of the bay and the restoration of the bay. So trying to make sure we have more of the, the grasses to support the, the fisheries and the tourism and all the services that we want out of the bay. Um, and you know, what is the status of the bay now? So uh, some of the surprising things are that we do have grasses in the bay and they're doing fairly well. They're just kind of shifting distributions. So some of those fun facts um, will be what we'll explore today. These are kind of interesting too because when you pull them open, sometimes you've got little critters living in there. Um, we've got in here, so this is a seagrass blade that's covered in a tunicate. So as you can, it's somewhat like almost clear and translucent. Tunicates are actually a pretty close relative to a vertebrate. They have a pretty involved filtration system and feeding mechanism, and so it encases around a seagrass blade. Trying to stay off the seagrass beds is really important. So one of um, the campaigns through Barnegat Bay Partnership is the Don't Harass the Seagrass, which is kind of a fun name too, where the, the impetus or the encouragement is that you stay off those seagrass beds, that you avoid them. And when it gets shallow in those areas as you're motoring, is to, to navigate away from them because those scars that happen when boats come through take a while to heal. Kind of like if you think on your in your lawn, you know, if you if you ran your truck over it and you spun it all up into mud, you know, it doesn't regrowth doesn't happen overnight. It takes an action on your part, and so that's part of my research efforts as well is going into areas that maybe no longer have seagrass and trying to understand why is it not growing anymore in that area and seeing if we can't help it along in a natural way. Student responses to seagrass is probably one of the best parts of my job in that they've never really seen it or contemplated it before but have always lived at the shore and it's exciting that I get to show them that. So we got started doing these live lectures on Facebook uh, from COVID uh, because I wanted a way to take my students out of the computer screen and back into nature and um, as long as I'm in nature not around other people it is a great and safe way of bringing students out of the classroom into a live natural laboratory. The, the types of activities that we're doing is, is ecology related, sustainability initiatives. Uh, we try to keep it related to um, Southern New Jersey and to the Pine Barrens, but uh, as interest increases in this, we're finding that people are more and more interested in broader areas. I, now that people are starting to go outside, the interest has started to change from just people who wanted to get outside to people who also want to be educated at the same time. Whatever I can do just to connect people with nature in a way that K through 12, college, um, and, and even you know your grandparents can understand. That's, I think, what is really important to, to connect people. Enjoy the rest of your days.